During this time each week, we've been looking at neighbors in the Bible, both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. And in doing that, we've learned some things about God, and we've learned a lot of things about ourselves, and we've even learned about the people around us. From, for our last neighbors class, turn to Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16. It's here that Paul is finishing up his letter. The Christians in Rome have heard him explain about God's righteousness and God's faithfulness. He's shown the need that every person has for God, and then he's highlighted God's love as seen through everything that Jesus did. He's answered some confusing questions, and he's also questioned some mistaken ways. In this closing section, he gets very personal with those to whom he's writing. Romans 16, verse 1. I commend you to our sister Phoebe, a deacon of the church in Centria. I ask you to receive her in the Lord in a way worthy of his people, and to give her any help she may need from you, for she has been the benefactor of many people, including me. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my co-workers in Christ Jesus. They risked their lives for me. Not only I, but all the churches of the Gentiles are grateful to them. Greet also the church that meets at her house. Greet my dear friend Eponidas, who was the first convert to Christ in the province of Asia. Greet Mary, who worked very hard for you. Greet Andronicus and Junia, my fellow Jews who have been in prison with me. They are outstanding among the apostles, and they were in Christ before I was. Greet Ampliatus and my dear friend in the Lord. We'll stop there for just a second. What do you learn that some of these Roman Christians were doing? Just from those first eight verses, what do you learn that some of these Roman Christians, what were they doing? What is it that Paul's mentioning that he knows about them? What were they doing? Well, we learned that Phoebe was a deacon or a deaconess or a servant there in the church. Priscilla and her husband, they had risked their lives for Paul. And it sounds like they had also been the people that were hosting a gathering of believers, whether it was this group or another group. Eponidas, he was an early Christ follower. There was Andronicus and Junia, and they, like Paul, they've been jailed. What do you admire most about those that you read about here? As I read that to you, or as you you read that to yourself, what is it that you admire about those of whom you read here? I can't help but see the partnerships that are going on. You can almost visualize these people locking arms to do whatever it is that needed to be done. A lot of similarities in the people, although there were obviously differences too, but they had a lot of things in common. They shared those things. Very Christ-centered. It just keeps coming up. You can just feel that coming up continually. Let's read some more, or meet some more. Verse 9. Greet Urbanus, our co-worker in Christ, and my dear friend Stachys. Greet Apolles, whose fidelity to Christ has stood the test. Greet those who belong to the household of Aristobulus. Greet Herodian, my fellow Jew. Greet those in the household of Narcissus, who are in the Lord. Greet Trophina and Trophosa, those women who work hard in the Lord. Greet my dear friend Persis, another woman who has worked very hard in the Lord. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, and his mother, who has been a mother to me too. Greet Asyncritus, Phlegon, Hermes, Petrobus, Hermas, and the other brothers and sisters with them. Greet Philagus, Julia, Nereus, and his sister, and Olympus, and all the Lord's people who are with them. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ send greetings. What stands out to you as Paul writes this part? As these greetings continue, what is it that stands out to you in here? All these people, all the things they're doing, what stands out to you? Maybe it's their, their faithfulness. Ah, oh, just it, you can again, just you can just feel it in just a little bit that we read their faithfulness. Did you catch that? It looks like there are more than one household where the whole household is believers, or at least the majority of the household. Several women are named, notable at this time, notable at any time, but notable that Paul would mention it here. 
a time where their value was not always very high, but several were believers. They'd found a place where they had value in Christ. Do any of these people remind you of people that you know? People today. These names, we're not always going to know somebody that has these names, but the things these people are doing, are there people today that you're reminded of? Sure there are. Maybe people in your past that have done things for you or you've done things with. People in your present. Things that you're doing and you're doing with somebody else and these look like things that you're doing or people that you know. As Paul continues to close his letter out, there'll be more names. There'll be names of those that are with Paul as he writes, but there'll also be those in Rome that Paul's writing to, and those names continue to be revealed. Here, like many places in the Bible, is a list of names. Many people here probably know each other. Most, if not all, probably know Jesus. They at least know someone who knows Jesus than this circle of people here. What do you think some of the stories are between these people? This one we really have to speculate on. What do you think some of the stories are between these people? We get some clues on how different people are known here. It sounds like, again, like they all may have at least had a working knowledge of each other. Some may have been very close friends. Maybe that's why he pairs them up like they do. There's people you know that you can have one or two people or one or two families in the same sentence. They're just, they're always together. Maybe some were close friends. Maybe some were family. Maybe that's why they're put together. They're, they're related. They've, they've blended families now because it's uh, two sisters and it's their husbands and it's their families. Maybe they work together. Maybe their shops are by each other. Maybe they farm together. They may not have agreed with one another on some things, but think about what Paul had to write about earlier. And he's had to remind them of things. So we can let that be part of their story, not in total agreement. Paul knows that even as he writes. But for all we don't know about them, we can know that they are known by God. The names are forever linked to this time and to this place, this, this city of Rome. Somehow they were a part of what God was doing or what God wanted to do in the city of Rome. Over our last 12 times together, we've, we've looked over the fence and we've seen our neighbors. Neighbors that have lived centuries before us and sometimes centuries before another neighbor. They lived in much different times. They lived in much different places. But thanks be to God, they were people just like us. So what we read of them well, it teaches us. Paul's list of names teaches. It teaches us that our neighbors are also right next door. They are in our church family. They're in our households. Your neighbor is in the pew in front of you on Sunday, or they're in the neighboring township on Tuesday. You may or may not know the neighbor three houses away, but God does. You may not know the neighbor who is a first-time guest on Sunday morning, but God knows who they are. It could be he has a story he's getting ready to tell, and it involves you and that neighbor. Today's neighbor is the person right by you. They have something to teach you, and they also have something to learn from you. Neighbor, as you watch now for what do you want to be remembered, as something's written about you. As it's written down, fill in your name, as a greeting is passed on about you, what will be said? For what will you be remembered by? Be the neighbor you want others to be to you. We learn that from our neighbors.